What's up superstars? On today's video, we're going to be unboxing and testing out a new heat press that we just picked up from Amazon. Now, a few weeks back, we actually did a very extensive heat press review where we tested out the best seven heat presses that we found from Amazon. This was actually part of that order, but unfortunately, it ran out of stock. Now, it finally went back into stock, so we wanted to go ahead and test this out. Why do we want to test this out? Because this one had actually very, very good reviews on Amazon. This one is a fancier studio 15 by 15 heat press. So this heat press has been available since 2010. So that's a very long time. And it has a 4.7 star out of 5. And it had 8,850 reviews at the time of this review. So very good ratings for a very long period of time. We had to order one and test this out. So I want to start off by saying we are not affiliated with fancier studio brand. We're just testing this out so that we can give you guys an in-depth look at this and also run our tests so we can make sure that this is adequate for our DTF process. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing and take a look at what's inside. Everything's nice and wrapped up. Got a good sign. Go ahead and move this on the floor. Looks out. All right, first impressions, heat press instructions. They've got their Facebook, their customer support is on Facebook. So that's pretty good. At least they are transparent about that. There's contact information over in Hayward, California. So that's also a good sign. They have a customer service in California with a up north, the uh, Phone number, so that's great. Fancier Studio, it's going to be 1500 watts, so that's high wattage, and it has a temperature of zero to 500 degrees, 53 pounds. I think the 53 pounds might be a different model because I saw this one at 43 pounds. Actually, the 50, the 15 by 15 says 72, but it doesn't feel like 72. I believe the box says 42, so that's incorrect. But let's go ahead and take a look at what else is here. I do see that there is a Teflon sheet included. Here's the roll. It's their sheet. I'll lay that on the side. But it's nice that that's included. Let's go ahead and lift this up for the first time. Okay. Go ahead and go ahead and just going to adjust the pressure a little bit. That's too tight. This little advice seems pretty good for so far. So I'm getting ready to fire this up, but let's talk about the product specs. So again, this is uh, a 15 by 15, 1,400 watts, 110 volts. So it plugs into your standard regular outlet. Temperature goes from zero to 500. Has an electronic time and heat control. The silicone pad is actually slightly glued. So this is actually very different from other ones that I've seen where they are not glued and they move around. This one is slightly glued, but you're still able to replace it if needed. It has pre adjustable pressure knob in the back. And this is going to be the blue back model. The model number here is FS 15 by 15 BB. And if you guys are not sure, we're going to go ahead and put a product link below in case you guys are interested in this product as always. So let's go ahead and fire this up and let's see how long it takes to heat up. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and see how long it takes to hit 300 degrees. 300 degrees is normally what we heat press our transfers at. So let's see how long it takes in order to get this kind of for us to heat press. Let's go ahead and get ready and hit it on, turn on the timer. And then I'm going to go ahead and head to the temperature and let's go ahead and adjust this. It was at 284. So I'm going to bring this up to 300 degrees, press the temperature again, and that should lock it in. And then, okay, that had an alarm. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the timer and let's also lower that to seven seconds because that's all we need for our transfers. All right. So while it's heating up and while I'm timing this, I did want to do some measurements so that we can get an idea of the footprint. So when the heat press is advertised at 15 by 15. I'm getting about 14 and 
It's almost 15 by 15 by four. This is just a little bit of shy. And then I'm going to get an overall height of this one's about 15 inches here. And then the overall footprint of this heat press from front to back is going to be 21 and a half inches. And then I have a height from the bottom to the handle at about 25 inches. So those are the dimensions of this seat press. And I'm looking right here at the controller. It's got some Celsius to Fahrenheit conversions in case you need to know, but we have this set at Fahrenheit and we have it set at 300 degrees. So let's go to fire up and see how long it takes to get to that 300 degree mark. All right, guys, so it's been about six minutes and night and 20 seconds to hit 290 seconds or 290 degrees. It hasn't hit quite hit 300 yet. I don't know why it's kind of stuck there. Okay, so it's moving slower now. So it did pick up towards the end of the 300, but then it slowed down a little bit. I did hear a little bit of a click. It probably turned off the heating element for a quick second, so it didn't want to overfire, but it is continuing to hit 300 now. So as it progresses to 300, it is six minutes and 50 seconds, let's say. So let's say about seven minutes to bar up to 300. And that's not a very long time, but it is seven minutes to heat up to this uh, temperature. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna test the heating uh, chamber on top to see how regulated this temperature is and how stable this heat is. So let's go ahead and test the center point. The center point, I'm getting 324 degrees. Top right corner, 291, 36. About 260, 270 up top right on, on the top right there. 275 right there, 273. About 305 there. 318 there. 293 here, let me chest this quarter again. 271 there. So it seems a little cold on this side and definitely hotter on the middle and on top right here. So let's stop the timer. That's what I've been getting for the heat so far. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test pressure. So I did already adjust the pressure knob, but I'm always gonna use a dollar bill to test out the quarters to make sure that everything is nice and balanced and even, and that we have even pressure all around. So let's go ahead and lay the dollar bills. Now, when I close this, it might start beeping. So just go ahead and disregard that. That's a good, that's a good feature for this because you don't want to overheat a shirt. That's what the beeping alarm is for. So let's go ahead and press. There's a nice click there. I'm going to pull the corner. I'm pulling pretty hard. I'm pulling hard enough that the key press will move. And it's good. So it, it was... One thing I also noticed about this is there was no handle here. So that's something I wish it had because when you're lifting this up, you're lifting against something. So having a handle here is very helpful, but it doesn't, doesn't have a handle. So let's go ahead and remove that. Pressure seems pretty good so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a heat press test using a t-shirt. So for the heat press test, we're going to use this shirt that we got from that apparel. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and let's take a look at the garment specs. So what I like about the Lat Apparel shirts is that they have specs on the bottom right here. So this one is going to be model 3A17. It's a 60-40 cotton poly blend. And this one actually has a tearaway tag. So I'm just going to grab the top tag and peel that. And this is a size one. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this password. So let's go to measure this transfer out. So for this transfer, it is uh, about nine and a half inches wide by 12 inches tall. Artwork that we created. Now let's go in and lay the shirt. So it doesn't have a pull, pull out slide. 
but I'm able to still reach out there. There's a, there's a, let's see how big this gap is here. So I've got about a almost two inch area for me to move around. I'm not sure how that's going to relate when I'm doing hoodies and, and uh, sweaters, but that works for me so far. I do have adequate room. It's not like a super stuffed out there. I've seen ones that had very, that had no room at all. And my fingers would get burned from the top heating plate. So let's go ahead and do a pre-press to remove any moisture. Countdown timer is going off. Great. Now it's already pre-pressed. Let's go ahead and grab our transfer. I'm going to go ahead and lay it here. I'm going to use my finger trick to make sure that's even on all both sides. I have one finger here and one finger here because I want to make sure it's even and there's no graphic here. So I'm taking the furthest points of the transfer to help me align this transfer. So that's about straight for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the Teflon sheet that was included. And let's run and press. All right. Let's let it cool down in a quick bit. So let's go to appeal. I usually like to use a finger or hand to hold the t-shirt down so that I'll have something to pull against. I'm going to crack the corner here and peel across. Now, as you guys can see, everything transferred all the way through. Very nice. Going to flip this around. Place it back onto the chest, onto the shirt. Second press. Let's go ahead and remove the shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and take it a deep look at this to make sure that everything looks good. What I'm looking for are the corners. I want to make sure that everything, let's lay this down so I have a bigger surface to look at and I'm not shaking as much holding the t-shirt. But what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the corners. I'm making sure that everything is nice and pressed evenly. And what I'm also checking is these lines. So there are vertical lines that run down the shirt. The reason why you have these lines is because when somebody wears a shirt and it expands, it expands left and right. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the lines that run down the t-shirt. And this is going to basically show that the graphic is embedded very well into the shirt. So I do see that these lines are present here. That means there's good pressure. But the ultimate test is to actually put this into the washer dryer, washer and dryer machine and to wash test this so that we can actually see the results and how it looks after it's the wash. Because most of the time, Garments do shrink in the washer and dryer. And if the heat press has enough pressure and the graphic is embedded into the shirt, then you're not going to get that premature wrinkling. But let's go ahead and take this home, wash this, and we'll come back with the results. What's up, Superstar? So we are back. We got the test results from yesterday's press. And I wanted to say that we went ahead and washed this on hot. I didn't even turn it inside out. We also dried it on hot. So this is the results. We didn't do anything different from what I normally do with a wash test result, but let's go ahead and take a look. So again, what I'm looking for here is I'm making sure that everything has been embedded and that these lines run across the shirt and they're presently, they're present when looking at it. There's also no bubble buildup so that there's no, there's no premature wrinkling. So everything looks perfect. This is going to last a very long time. There's no areas that have been lifting off. So this is going to pass our wash test result, guys. So this is good. It passes our wash test results and it is perfectly fine. No premature wrinkling. Everything looks good, guys. So before we get into the ratings on this heat press, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons about this press. Now, as far as the construction, it is a one piece construction. The controller and the timer, everything was already built in. So I didn't have to worry about any type of assembly. So that's nice. It's a, it's a pure metal and aluminum solid construction. There's no plastic parts here. So that's also very nice. It's nice and sturdy. And it fired to hit 300 degrees. It took seven minutes to fire up to that. So that's not very long. That's not short either, but it does take seven minutes to hit 300 degrees. Uh, it has a countdown timer. So if you set it at seven seconds, 
Once it runs down to seven seconds, it will start beeping so that you can release this. So it does have that. And then the thing that I like about this, it does have a, a slightly glued bottom platform. Most of the ones that I've seen in the market are attached and you would have to readjust it every single time. This one is slightly glued. You can replace it if needed, but it is slightly glued so that it stays intact and in place and you don't have to fiddle with it while you guys are heat pressing shirts. And it has solid pressure all around as we did our um, heat press pressure test. It passed, with, it passed with flying colors. Pressure was solid all around. It was very even all around as well, so that's good. And the last thing is the Teflon sheet is included. It's not in this photo, but the Teflon sheet is included, so it's ready to go to press. And now let's talk about some cons because this is obviously not perfect. Let's talk about some things that they can improve on. Um, there were some low heating spots. So I was getting, I, we did fire it up to 300 degrees, but we did get low heating spots of 260 degrees, but we did get highs of 320 degrees. So most of it was over 300, but there are areas that were under 300. So that was a little bit of a concern for us. But when we, pat, when we press onto the shirt, everything transferred, everything turned out fine. So it's not a real major deal breaker, but I did want to bring that so that you guys are aware of that. Um, there's also no handle here. So I love having a handle here so that there's something to pull up against, but there's no handle present here. So I feel like that's something that could be improved in the future. But again, not a deal breaker. It is still very sturdy. So you still have to just hold it down with your hand, but you can release it by pulling up. There's also no pressure gauge, so you can't really know how much pressure is in there, but that's also standard for a lot of these budget heat presses. Um, there's also uh, no auto release, which is standard for most of these kinds of heat presses. And it has a 30 day Amazon warranty period. So if it fails within 30 days, you have to take it up with Amazon to get it replaced or returned. Now let's go ahead and go to our ratings here. So we're gonna be rating this between one to five. We're gonna be judging this on sturdiness, on uh, being usability, the pressure, heat assembly, or heat distribution, and lastly, assembly. So for sturdiness, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a five. It is very sturdy. I didn't have to add on or install anything extra on this, and it feels like it's very sturdy, and the weight it has good weight to this. So that's good, no plastic parts, and as far as easy to use, I'm gonna give this a four out of five. Reason, it didn't have that handle there, so I'm gonna deduct a point from not having that handle there. But besides that, again, buttons are easy to use. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Now, as far as pressure, it, it had pressure, good pressure all along. We're gonna give this a five out of five. It passed that test. Heat distribution, we're gonna give this a four out of five. Reason for that is there were some cold spots here that was not 300 degrees. So I'm gonna to have to deduct some points for that. We're gonna give it a four out of five. And again, no assembly, Teflon sheets included. Everything was plug and play, ready to go to your 110 outlet. So guys, out of all those things I've categorized this at, out of five, we're gonna go overall give this one a 4.6 out of five. So we're gonna recommend this press. It's pretty good if you guys are looking for a press in this budget. After tax and using Amazon Prime to ship this to us, it was only 209.46. So that's pretty good for a press that's right about $200 mark. So if you guys are looking for a press, you guys can check this out. We'll have a link below. We understand why this company has been around for over 13 years and has such high ratings at 8,800 at this time of review. It's been around for a while and we understand why. It can get better. There's more parts to innovate, but as far as something that lasts a long time that has a reputation that's been around on the marketplace for a long time, this is pretty good. My name is Phil. You guys have any other questions, let me know. I'll answer it for you guys, and I'll catch you guys on that next video, guys.